Hey, how's it going? This is Jack Oberkirsch with HomeMusicMaker.com. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on the Reaper Performance Meter. What is it? How do you open it up? And how can you use it to optimize Reaper's performance? So, before we go any further, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell. You want to be notified when our other videos come out. We got a lot more awesome content coming your way and you don't want to miss out on it. Cool. So let's dive right in. Let's take a look at this track I'm working on. As you can see, um, it's got about 35 individual tracks on it with plugins on pretty much every single track and also instances of contact and other sample libraries on the majority of the tracks. And that's what's taking up a lot of my computing power for sure. Those, those um, virtual instrument libraries are pretty beefy, especially these ones in particular. So let's move on to how to open up the performance meter. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to view, scroll down to performance meter, click that and boom. Simple as that to open it up. So let's take a look at this thing and what it's telling us. So right off the bat, you can see we have this little graph right here. It's actually giving us in real time our CPU use. Um, there's peaks and valleys, as you can see. And this will change as you, um, if we were to play the track, it would probably take a huge jump. And then the next thing um, it's telling us is our current CPU use. And it's hovering right around anywhere from 25 to 27%, kind of in that range, which is... Um, quite a bit of the computing power of my of my computer at the moment. Um, and if we, if we go down, we have RAM use also, which is hovering between 1,200 and 1,300 megabytes. Um, and that will also jump if I hit play on the track and these plugins and sample libraries start doing their thing. Um, and then the next thing we can see is how much of our CPU is being used by effects and plugins alone. So check that out. It's right around 14, anywhere from probably 12 to 15% jumping around. Um, so that's quite a bit of CPU being used by, um, or quite a bit of computing power being used by my effects and plugins on the track. So let's scroll down. The last thing on the performance meter is this, um, incredible tool that actually has a list of all the, um, sample libraries and plugins that I have and how much computing power it's using. For example, uh, my master track is using anywhere from 1.5 to 2%. And that's because all the effects that are on my master track are actually processing the whole mix in real time. So, um, so that master track is taking up a ton of CPU. And then the mix bus, for example, has 0% because at the moment my mix bus has zero plugins on it. So on and so forth down the line, you can see some of the, some of the big um, hitters are these string libraries almost take up 1%. That one did hit 1% there. So... And then some of the other ones, like these synthesizers, take up a little bit less CPU. So it's interesting to pull up the performance meter and see how much each plugin is using in terms of CPU. But yeah, so that's the performance meter. That's what it's telling us. You know, it gives us a detailed breakdown of how much CPU we're using and what the main sources of the CPU use are. So let's move on. The next thing I want to cover is a little section I like to call a sad truth. And this is just um, something you have to face if you have uh, maybe not the best computer in the music production business. Let's say you have a computer that doesn't have a ton of RAM, maybe either four gigabytes or hopefully at least eight gigabytes. You know, if you're to pull up the performance meter and you had a track like this with a bunch of plugins, uh, there's a good chance your track won't even play through. Your CPU would be, you know, way higher than this. You know, it's not something to dwell on too much because if you're serious about music production, you can totally make it work. And I'm going to give you some tips today on how you can reduce your CPU use. You can totally make it work and just, you know, make a plan in the future to invest in a, a more powerful system. That, that's if you're serious about music production. And if not, you can totally get by with, you know, a, a weaker computer with less RAM. But, you know, a sad truth to face is if you want to, if you want to work on a, a huge track with a, a bunch of tracks and a bunch of plugins, eventually you're going to have to invest in a a computer with at least I'd recommend anywhere from 16 to 64 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, you can go more than that, but I've definitely never needed more than 64 gigabytes of RAM. This this computer I'm working on has 32 gigabytes if you want to um for reference to what your CPU CPU use would be on your computer. So, yeah, I just wanted to cover that real quick. It's something to think about if you're serious about music production, investing in a um a computer. It's made all the difference for me cuz back when I on my old laptop, I had 8 gigabytes of RAM in towards the end of finishing up a mix on a song. Um, it was almost like I had to trust that it sounded good because I could hardly press play on the track. So it got to be a huge detriment. But anyway, let's move on. We're going to go over some ways that we can reduce our CPU load. So let's do this. We're going to start by pressing play on this track. This this track is called uh, Shots Fired. Let's just listen to it for a second and see what our performance meter does. Already we can see that the CPUs jumped to around 40 to 50% and the effect CPU is going up a ton as well. 
You can also see that this graph is going to produce some way higher peaks in terms of CPU, so let's, watch, let's let it play for just another second and watch this. We'll scroll, we'll scroll down these plugins, you can see they're, they're using more CPU also now as well. Some of these percussion libraries are up to 2%, so, okay, cool. Um, yeah, like I said, if you have a computer that doesn't have much RAM, I like in previous days I wouldn't have even been able to play that track. So we're definitely much better off now. But still, let's 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 look at some ways we can reduce CPU. The first thing and the easiest thing is reducing our buffer size. So to do that, we're gonna hit options, go to preferences, go to it's under audio, and it's the first one, device. Right now, my block size, it's either called, you know, it can be called block size or buffer size. It's at 64, and that's a pretty ambitious block size. That's pretty low. We're going to go mega. We're going to make a big change. You can go slower than this just um, and double it as you go. So it, it was at 64. The next thing you would be, if you wanted to go slow, would be 128, then 256, then 512, and then 1024. I'm going right to 1024 just to, just to see if we can reduce some CPU right off the bat. So 1024, apply that, hit OK. And yeah, look at that. The CPU is down in the single digits now. So yeah, I just switched the block size to 1024. Um, we can see our CPU has gone down. We're going to press play on the track and see if it's still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, before it was hovering around 40 or 50%. Now it's at something like 15%. And, you know... If you're recording, it's good to have a lower block size because it might actually affect the audio quality um, to, to a small degree. But if you're mixing or monitoring or just listening back, I especially if you need to save CPU, I, it's totally okay to raise your block size. And like I said, we could have gone smaller than that. I doubled it to show the, the big example. But you, know, you can slowly change your block size until Reaper starts to perform a little bit better. So let's say you change your block size, though, or your, and slash your buffer size, and uh, Reaper's still giving you the business. The next thing that we can do to reduce um, CPU, and this is, this goes mega. You know, this saves a ton. We're gonna we're gonna render the entire percussion bus, all these plugins. So take a look, all these plugins here, down to like number, yeah, I think 14. Those are all. Oh no, actually, even 17. Those are all percussion instruments. Those all belong to my percussion bus, and they're using a ton of CPU. So we're gonna highlight them all by, um, you know, sh pressing Shift click, right click any one of the tracks since they're all selected go to render slash freeze tracks render tracks to stereo stem tracks click that so what this is going to do it's going to turn all of our percussion instruments into one audio track um, and this is great for reducing cpu uh, obviously though you should only do this if you're satisfied with the plugins that you have on the track because what i'm doing is i'm print i'm printing all the effects and plugins from each track into audio files so don't be too don't be too afraid because it, it keeps a uh, it keeps a copy of the former file as well as making the new audio file. So if you need to, you can go back and change it, but that becomes a pain really fast. So you don't want to start rendering tracks until you are happy with the effects that are on there. This song is almost fully mixed, and also I'll probably undo this after the video, so it's not a big deal either way. But let's see what it's done for my CPU use. Let's see if it's made a difference because now you can see all those tracks with all those sample libraries. Are all muted now because I don't need them. As you can see, though, like I said, it saved a copy of them, so all all that data is still there. But let's play the track now and see what our CPU is doing. Like. So that did make a difference by just a few percent. Not as big a difference as um, changing that block size, but so if, if you need to save even more CPU after changing the block size, you can render tracks. And that was just the percussion bus. For example, I can go through and I could. Um, I could go through and print the strings. I could go through and print all these like synthesizers and electronic loops that I have going on. And then, you know, my CPU would just be, it would just drop to the floor. So I'm gonna undo that because I don't actually wanna print those tracks. That's a big saver of, um, of CPU as well, is rendering tracks. And again, just to, to do that, you would just right click a track and hit render to render tracks to stereo stem track. And also I made a mistake. Technically you don't have to highlight all these tracks. You could actually just on the percussion bus here, you can hit render tracks to stereo stem track. And because they all belong to that track, you'll get the same effect. So either way, but yeah, let's move on to the last method of saving CPU. And I don't recommend this method. I, I really never, never, ever do this method, but I figure I should cover it since it's in the tutorial. So let's say we need to save more CPU. What we can do, we could take this Darbuka's track, for example, right click it. And you can click move tracks to new sub project. 
And what that'll do is it'll create a new Reaper file. So I'm not actually going to do it in this tutorial because like I said, I don't recommend it. It's kind of, it's a little bit destructive in my opinion. It can make things really confusing. Um, it would create a new Reaper file and move just that track over to it so that you still have that track intact, but it won't be taking up CPU on this track. Like I said, I don't really think this m method makes much sense, but you know, if you need to, if you have a couple tracks that you don't really need to hear to mix or work on the song and your computer's bogged down, you can move a couple tracks over to another sub project and go from there. Again, it's not really my thing. I, I never use this method, but if you want to try it, you just right click it, pr press move tracks to new sub project, but and get messy really, f really fast because you're making an extra Reaper file for every time you do it. Cool. So yeah, let's do a quick recap here on the video today. Like I said, the Reaper performance meter, as you can see, it gives us a display of our CPU use in real time, our RAM use in real time, which effects are using our CPU, and that's very handy to know. We went over the fact that to open it, you just click, you just click view, performance meter, simple as that. We went over, you know, that if you're serious about music production over time, you might want to think about investing in a, uh, a high quality computer, you know, a high performance machine. That's something you can do over time, especially if you use these methods to reduce um, CPU and RAM use on your computer. And to come to go over these methods again, it was reduced buffer size. To do that, you go to options, preferences, audio device, and request a larger block size. So it can go anywhere from 64 up to 1024 or higher or lower if you really want to. But yeah, um, I recommend 1024. That's a pretty slow block size. That'll save you some CPU. But remember to keep it low when recording if possible. The next thing you can do is rendering plugins and effects onto a track, turns the track into an audio file, but saves a ton of CPU. To do that, you uh, right click the track you want to do it to and select render, and you can either render it to mono or stereo stem tracks, depending on what you're trying to do. And then the final method, which again is one I do not recommend, is if you want to save CPU on a couple tracks, you can right click a track, move it to a no new sub project, makes a new Reaper project, it's pretty messy. I don't recommend it, but yeah. So that's the Reaper performance meter, and that's how you can use it to um, reduce CPU and uh, improve Reaper's performance. Once again, I'm Jack Oberkirsch with HomeMusicMaker.com. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell, and stay tuned for more videos. Have a good one.